We move on to, obviously, then, the early part of the bill, which refers to uh, tobacco, smoking and uh, e-cigarettes. I'll start off, then. Clearly, we've seen conflicting evidence as to the harm of lot, le lot less harm from e-cigarettes compared to tobacco. And we've recently seen the Public Health England paper produced. Can I have, basically, to your view is, does the bill actually help or hinder um, smoking cessation programs as it stands? Because obviously one of the arguments being used very heavily is that these cigarettes are, can help cessation of, of tobacco products. Um, does the bill hinder that? I'm not sure the bill uh, proposed that particularly, but, but uh, it, it, it my understanding is the bill is, is, is proposing um, just some narrow measures to bring the regulation of e-cigarettes in line with that of tobacco, particularly in relation to public places and workplaces, um, and we support that. Um, that's only a minority of time, I guess, or particularly the public places perhaps that people spend, um, so it doesn't interfere with what they do at home in terms of your, your question about um, smoking cessation. Um, this is a rapidly moving area uh, at the moment, quite controversial. Um, evidence is accumulating all the time, although it's still pretty early days. Um, our, we've confined ourselves to the question, the actual proposal about um, uh, regulating um, e-cigarettes use in public and workplaces and um, and we support the proposal on balance and, um, and we do so because we're worried about undermining the ban in public places by making it more difficult to enforce on the one hand uh, the ban of, 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 of tobacco which has been so successful um, and um, we're worried also about renormalizing the habit of smoking um, and we're worried also about, we're slightly concerned about what's in these e-cigarettes. We, we realise nicotine's in them in varying concentrations, but there's other things in them which varies considerably between brands. Um, uh, and we're worried about um, taking a precautionary approach till we know more about that in terms of uh, being exposed to those, in a sense, pollutants indoors. So exposing other people to those. Um, We've got, um, uh, we've not put it in the evidence, but we've, um, or at least this, this is me personally, I've recently become aware that uh, um, I've had advice that uh, in a different realm that um, these devices are actually perfect for utilising to fill with other chemicals such as legal highs and smoking them. So we're a bit worried about that, about them being opened up and filled with something else. Um, they're actually perfect, apparently, an expert tells me, um, for uh, utilising to take legal highs. So that's a little bit of a concern and nothing to do with this because, but, I mean, it's uncontroversial, I think, and I think across the board, that they do need to be regulated in terms of their content, wh whether that's as medicines or whatever, so that they're standardised, so whatever they say they're giving you, you get. But also they maybe need to regulate the actual... Um, uh, the construction of them so you can't take them apart and put something else in um, as well. Because this bill obviously doesn't put the regulation, those no. regulations in place. But no, no. So this is about public places and, and, and workplaces and we support um, okay. the provision. Well, I, I find the whole thing about e-cigarettes quite concerning, talking to young people and you ask them about their smoking habits and they say, I, I don't smoke. And if you specifically ask them about e-cigarettes, they say, oh, well, when I go out, I do have those. I sh we share them around. Um, sharing such things actually increases the risk of getting um, diseases, uh, infectious diseases being spread, um, particularly things like hepatitis. Um, so we, we want to discourage that. And nicotine per se is an addictive product. There is nicotine in these, though people quite often don't realise there's any nicotine in them when you talk to them. Um, and nicotine has got 
um, health effects that are not good, like increasing your blood pressure, um, causing vasoconstriction, and various other things. Um, so we, we haven't got enough evidence because most of the evidence has been on cigarettes. We need pure evidence about the health effects of nicotine and these e-cigarettes. Okay, the low doses may be low, but they are still addictive and people want to have more and more of them very often. And if they are used, they should be used as a means to reduce smoking and give up smoking, not as a substitute smoke for smoking. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? You've mentioned already the possible medical use of them and regulation as a consequence. If the um, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency actually does decide to prove some, does the bill cope with that situation in its present form? I, I don't think, I think that if they become a, a medicine per se that is potentially prescribable, prescribable. then we will need some some um, stronger legislation which presumably would come in with the through the medicines act about okay. prescribing them um, and the restrictions on the prescriptions and that would cover the the issue about um, it because potentially you might want to prescribe them for somebody who is under 18 there would need to be some specific a mechanism whereby you could let an under 18 have them if they were on prescription and and there are other legislations that cover other um, s things like um, controlled drugs that say if you've got a prescription you can hold these controlled drugs so I don't think that there would be any problem bringing that sort of legislation um, and it it could take um, it could proceed this or supersede, I think is the word, um, the, the legislation of the Public Health Act in Wales. Okay, thanks for that. Do you also think the extension of the places in which a smoking ban exists uh, is, is part of the bill and is helpful because we are talking about some open spaces rather than enclosed spaces now, um, particularly children's playground areas, for example? Um, we uh, obviously the exposure to the the pollutants is lower in open space, but um, but we but we support um, it's partly because of the normalising effect. But we support the um, the extension to children's playgrounds. John, I wonder if you might have any suggestions of other areas that might be included um, in that extension of um, public space um, within which smoking tobacco isn't permitted. We've um, heard ideas in terms of um, tourist beaches, um, for example. Um, I think some people feel strongly that outdoor areas of restaurants and cafes um, might be included. Um, shopping centres. Um, there are a number of suggestions. I wonder if um, you've given any thought as to further extensions that might be included in this legislation. I don't think we, we, we've given uh, specific thought in, in great detail, but I think uh, the, the test you'd have to look at is, is it a sort of enclosed space whereby people are going to be in close proximity with other people and therefore uh, liable to be subject to the second-hand effects of smoking? I, I think uh, what we have said is that the, the proposal that's in the bill that says that I think ministers have to be satisfied that it will uh, enhance the public health of the people of Wales. I think that that is a good test uh, and therefore I think the approach we would take is as long as you apply uh, an assessment and that assessment is sufficiently robust to tell, uh, then I think that, that would satisfy us. I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because if you look at, say, tourist beaches, uh, I mean, I've uh, been on Porth Call Beach when it's been a very sunny day and it's been very crowded and I find myself in close proximity with other people. I'm sure if you were walking along Porth Call Beach in a, a cold November afternoon, uh, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be, be the same scenario if, if somebody was smoking. So I think it has to be thought through carefully. I don't think it's necessarily an easy thing to define. No, I, I guess it could be times of the year, um, you know, as you have restrictions on walking dogs on beaches during uh, the peak months, for example. But yeah, OK. Yeah, okay. Ellen? I just wanted to ask whether you, you believe that um, e-cigarettes um, are going to play a significant role in reducing the 
consumption and use of tobacco for individuals and eliminating it for some. There's obviously a public health benefit to that if that happens. And do you consider that there's any real danger then in, um, in um, promoting the concept that e-cigarettes um, should be placed in the same category as tobacco <coughs> cigarettes in the public's um, viewpoint? I mentioned that this is a rapidly developing area. It is possible that um, the e-cigarettes have, you know, um, uh, and there are a number of conflicting reports out at the moment, and I think it's fair to say there's a fairly large split because it's too early in terms of evidence within public health and within medicine about it. So it's, um, it is possible they've got something to offer, but they... I do, um, uh, but there are some worries about it. Um, I have mentioned renormalizing. I don't think it's that controversial actually about the public places because these are still pollutants, uh, indoor public spaces. And you know, nicotine, we don't know what the carcinogen is in tobacco. We think there are probably several, um, but we know several, we know there are lots of mutagens, so you can cause mutations in a test tube, if you like. Um, using various chemicals, and I think nicotine is one of those, for instance. Um, there's no doubt that it's a, a lesser evil than, to, than the whole, than tobacco. I think the, we are very worried about renormalizing um, smoking in social and uh, spaces and supporting, you know, and um, a, a, a aiding that. Uh, and, um, and we're worried about undermining the, 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 the ban on public places and workplaces because it's very hard to tell if some, sometimes from a distance whether somebody's vaping or smoking because some of the devices even light up at the end. So um, those, th those are worries. Um, uh, something else I was going to say. It'll probably have come you, back have you to given me. any consideration to the fact that it may be more appropriate um, for e-cigarettes to be banned in a restricted number of public places, and I'm thinking of social places, I think you called them, um, and they could be public, it could be specifically um, named in legislation as public transport, places that um, sell, serve, food and drink, that, that it's a less restricted, uh, it's, a, um, it's, uh, it's not as restricted as tobacco, in order to make that differentiation, and in order possibly for people to be um, to feel that um, that they have more freedom in using e-cigarettes and that it's an incentive to use e-cigarettes over tobacco cigarettes? Well, as I say at the moment, I mean, our policy line is, is we support them it being congruent with cigarettes for a number of reasons, so there being no incongruity. But it, it's an early, you know, it's, it's, it's early on. They've taken off, undoubtedly. Um, we're slightly concerned in general that um, a lot of the companies have been taken over and now owned by, owned by the tobacco industry itself and we're worried about them being used as a gateway product um, in certain groups and we're worried that some of the products are coloured and perfumed and we worry that they're targeted in spite of denials at or attractive to young people. So. Um, we, we're nervous, but they may have a, a, a part to play. We would like, we don't want the existing provisions for tobacco to be undermined, though. Um, that's, that's our major point, and we don't want to renormalise the activity of smoking. Can I ask the RCGP as well? I think I would support that. I, I, I really don't think that they should be allowed in, in public, any public spaces, really. Um, <coughs> and, and there's also the the evidence that children are now kind of picking them up and using them as they used to. When I was a child, you used to go around with your little sweetie cigarette, didn't you? And, and children are doing the same sort of things with the, 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 the vapes. So uh, I think probably restricting them is good, h however you can. Okay. i got three final questions from Kirsty Altab and Alan, and then our time is up. So, Kirsty. Uh, thank you. You said uh, several times this morning that your uh, concern is about renormalisation of smoking. The report published just last month by Public Health in England, uh, key messages, paragraph three, there is no evidence that electronic cigarettes are undermi undermining the long-term decline in cigarette smoking amongst adults and youth, and in fact may be contributing 
to it, despite some experimentation with e-cigarettes amongst never smokers, e-cigarettes are attracting very few people who have never smoked into regular e-cigarette use. And there is no evidence in England that uh, e-cigarettes are renormalizing uh, smoking uh, at all. I'm just wondering whether, given uh, several times that you've expressed concerns mm -hmm. about renormalization, whether you have any specific Welsh evidence that would contradict uh, your colleagues in Public Health England and in their report last month, which is quite clear, actually, that there is no evidence of renormalization or undermining. But maybe in Wales, maybe there's a different set of data or circumstances. Um, well, in Wales, uh, 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 the, line, the policy line of, um, of Public Health Wales is contrary to that. It's not supporting um, e-cigarettes. So, um, uh, what I'm telling you, though, I, I mentioned... There's a difference the between a policy line and evidence, isn't there? Oh, yeah, and I've mentioned, that's what I was going to say. It's quite early days in the evidence ba uh, 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 base uh, in general. And so uh, uh, what I'm telling you is, you know, this has been considered by the um, BMA um, ARM annual representative meeting. And, and uh, you know, what we've, what we've told you is what is our view is what the BMA policy is. Thank you. Thank you. And I will highlight there's a report from the University of Southern California of last month, which also actually puts an opposite view to that. In generally, um, some quite heavy criticism of the report that um, Kirsty's referred to. Uh, I can't quite remember what the criticism was, but it'd be quite useful. It, w it would be. Well, it made a big impression on I was, you. I was feed reading, Kirsty, but <laughs> it would be useful for us, I think, as Kirsty's mentioned in the report, to also consider what um, criticism has emerged since its publication. Uh, so, uh, uh, just to clarify really the point, there, are, there is an article in the Lancet which challenges the report. There's also another article recently published by others who have challenged the report. So it is a question of conflicting evidence at this point in time, which has already been highlighted by our witnesses today. Uh, so two final questions, Altaf and then Hussein, and then Alan. Mind you, we talk about the cigarette smoking and e-cigarettes. Uh, how about shisha and hookah? You know, it's so prevalent now in, uh, you know, uh, in social places, really. Should um, that be included? <laughs> Crikey. Uh, <laughs> help, what's the ARM said on that? <laughs> Hashish. I think, I mean, Shisha and it, it hookah. Is, it has mm -hmm. got oh. nicotine in some of them. Absolutely. They? And people don't realise, again, you know, talking to patients, they don't realise, and, and that's my issue about some of these reports, are people declaring what they are actually inhaling um, and so I think that the hookers should be restricted and I think are they not mostly now used outside I don't know I have not much experience of their use or see their no, use I, I don't say. myself but you're right they can put anything in them and yes. they can have it that's why they are really popular yes and and people again mm. use them socially who may be young people are using these things socially as the e-cigarettes are, um, and um, they are not necessarily knowing what is inside. It could be anything, and they're not declaring. So we need more evidence about how many people are using these different things, because they think it's not smoking, so they don't say they are using them. Okay. So, Chair, the point is that whether we should include hookah and shisha in this. Well, I, I go to the point, the nicotine products. The yeah. uh, final question, Marlene. <laughs> The language you've used, Dr. Monaghan, in answering questions on e-cigarettes has been very inconclusive. You're worried, you have concerns. It's very difficult for us to make law on the basis of worries and concerns. We need evidence. And although I don't disagree with your fundamental point, and I actually intuitively think you're probably right, that e-cigarettes renormalizes a place of tobacco in society in a way that we would not wish to see. And intuitively, I wouldn't necessarily agree, disagree with that at all. But it is a matter of some concern that the BMA is coming here and asking us to legislate without significant hard evidence upon which to base those, uh, those points. Before you answer, I'd like to clarify that the BMA are returning to the committee on the 1st of October when we look specifically at this topic. Yeah, I understand that. But we've, we've, we were having this conversation this morning. So. 
I'm not sure we are specifically coming here and asking you to legislate. I think the Welsh Government is intending to legislate, and we've been asked to give our view on what's proposed. Yeah. But you support it? Yeah, but we've said we support it. Yes, we do. Yeah. So why? It's just a slight... Well, I think Dr Monaghan has explained that. I think that. Dr Monaghan has given us the answer why. He's, he's expressed his concern of the lack of evidence either way and his precautionary position at this point in time on regard to renormalisation. I think that's been fair. So I'll come to an end of this this morning, and can I thank the witnesses for their evidence? You will receive a copy of the transcript for any factual inaccuracies. Please let us know as soon as possible if there are any. So once again, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.